All right, we are now recording this session of our Sunday morning service. Um, if you don't want to be recorded, you can go ahead and mute yourself and turn off your camera. Um, your presence will still be recorded. Uh, we're probably going to repeat this uh, message in a few moments, though. You guys can chit chat for a little bit. We have a couple minutes. Very tired. It's very hot out. Though some of you are outside, which is curious. Not yet burning up, I take it. No, see some heads shaking. No, not burning yet. Not wet yet. It was supposed to rain, though. It was drizzling a little bit when I took my trash out. I have a few sprinkles, but it's okay. Yeah, that's cool. It's not unbearable quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just tired of being inside. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting the advisement. We are recording at this time, so if you don't want to be recorded, go ahead and turn off your uh, camera and your microphone. Your presence still will be recording, recorded. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, Dirk is going to give the Dharma talk. Um, Dirk, did you want to do prayers or do you want Matthew to do those? Uh, I thought if Matthew was planning to do them, he should go ahead and do them. Okay. All right. I'll do that. Go ahead, Matthew. It's all yours. You guys could go ahead and mute yourself. Um, that would be great so that Matthew could uh, do the prayers for us. Thanks. <clears throat> Teacher. Foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, Helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge.
When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who are wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also, I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, Bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing, and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, May I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Idam, guru, ratna, mandalakam, niratiyami. The Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time. The Bhagavan was dwelling on the mass of Vulture's Mountain on Rajagriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra, <clears throat> Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom 
should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye. No ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell on the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. And we'll say this silently 21 times. Tayate gate gate peregate peresamgate bodhisoha. Taete gate gate peregate peresam gate bodhisoha. Shariputra, the bodhisattva, mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva, mahasattva, Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharidevaputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. So um, my name is Dirk, also known as Yeshe Sang Lam, a student of Yeshe Jinpa's. On Wednesday afternoon, Lama La texted me and asked me if I would do a talk. And so here I am. Um, I'm a little slow on repreparation, so let's see how it goes. I'll try not to overwhelm people who are new, and I'll try not to bore people who aren't new. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Uh, I'm actually going to start with a, a Manjushri practice, uh, so that we, we can do this brief Manjushri practice that Lama has asked us to do, and which we now are uh, doing uh, together on Mondays when Lama's not teaching on Monday. Uh, so I need to present my screen. And this is the Praise to Manjushri, Glorious Wisdom's Excellent Qualities by Vajra Yudha. Um, this is a, a very important practice. Uh, throughout all of the schools of Tibetan Buddhism. Homage to the guru and protector of Venerable Manjugosha, 
Your wisdom is brilliant and pure like the sun, free from the clouds of the two obscurations. You perceive the whole of reality exactly as it is, and so hold the book of transcendental wisdom at your heart. You look upon all beings imprisoned with in samsara, enshrouded by the thick darkness of ignorance and tormented by suffering with the love of a mother for her only child. Your enlightened speech, endowed with 60 melodious tones, like the thundering roar of a dragon, awakens us from the sleep of destructive emotions and frees us from the chains of karma. Dispelling the darkness of ignorance, you wield the sword of wisdom to cut through all our suffering. Pure from the very beginning, you have reached the end of the ten boomies, and perfected all enlightened qualities. Foremost of the Buddha's heirs, your body is adorned with 112 marks of enlightenment. To Manju Gosha, the gentle voice, I prostrate and pray, dispel the darkness from my mind. Omarapatsana di, 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 Om Rabatsana di 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 With all of your kindness and love, let your wisdom's shining light clear the darkness of my ignorance once and for all. Grant me, I pray, the intelligence, the brilliance, to understand the scriptures, the words of the Buddha, and the works of the masters. And whenever I wish to look upon you or ask of you anything at all, Lord and Protector Manju Shri, let me see you without any hindrance. Alrighty, now uh, I want to do. We'll close with that same practice, and I realized that I had intended to give a little bit of a couple of hints about how to practice that, but we'll do that at the end also, because it is such a brief practice. Um, I'm going to continue to present because I have notes that I'm presenting uh, today. And the subject of today's uh, presentation is, well, let me bring up my notes. Um, well, it's chanting the names of Manjushri. Uh, it's also <clears throat> translated as uh, litany of the names of Manjushri and as concert of names of Manjushri is an extremely important text, uh, tantric text. In the Derje uh, 
I'm not going to just read my talk. So, but uh, in in the Derje uh, Tanjur, uh, it comes first. It comes even before Kalda Chakra. This is uh, it's from the uh, net of magical illusion, and so this is also referred to as the king of all tantras, and as net of magical manifestation of Manjushri. I'm going to just quickly here. Uh, jump uh, out of my own flow. I'm going to take you to the end of this uh, of this text. This is the text. Uh, this translation is by Ronald Davidson, and uh, I got this text, this translation, this copy from the Foundation for the Preservation of the Mahayana Tradition, fpmt.com, which I have also referenced in in the notes, which I'll post later. But when we get to the end of this text, it says proclaimed by the Blessed One, the Tathagata Shakyamuni, in the Net of Samadhi chapter occurring in the Mahayoga Tantra, the Arya Maya, Maya <laughs> sorry, Arya Maya Jala in 16,000 lines. This litany of names of the Blessed One, the Gnostic entity Manjushri, possessing absolute validity is hereby complete. Um, the thing, the reason I, the reason I showed you that is because it said that in that magical net, that fifteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine verses of that tantra had already been taught at the time of this, at the, uh, before this tantra. So this is like the apex and the culmination of that entire cycle. Uh, I have to say probably that uh, I'm going to probably give you more information than you than you want to hear, uh, unless you already know this material. And I think there is a good uh, a, a good argument made, and often happens uh, that we provide uh, the the Dharma in small, uh, easily digestible chunks like a uh, uh, grandma lama jinpa uh does uh where he uh, like a mother bird giving food pre-digested food to its chicks but on the other hand uh and that's good because it helps people to uh kind of uh, be able to uh not feel threatened not feel overwhelmed and to uh slowly learn and master the material but there is also a good case to be made for the opposite approach, which uh, sometimes is a good thing too, which is just a plunge into the middle of a bunch of things that you don't really understand, realize that you don't understand it, let your, and, uh, let your, let your preconceptions uh, not have anything to hold on to, and uh, just uh, swim in the material a little bit and let things form as they will. Because at least in the first case, uh, the other the downside of being able to master the material as it's fed to you is that you can also enclose it within your conceptual framework. You can use it to prove yourself right, to say that what you've always believed was right, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so I'm going to be doing the second approach here today. We're going to plunge right into this extremely complex tantra uh, without much preliminary. Although I'm going to now go into some preliminary materials. If you're familiar with the five Dhyani Buddhas, this will be old hat to you. Uh, the five Dhyani Buddhas are, Buddhas are uh, widely practiced throughout all of Mahayana Buddhism. Uh, they do tend to be a little bit more uh, highlighted in the, in the Tantric Buddhist uh, schools, but they are also part of all of Mahayana Buddhism. Uh, I have received on this uh, a lot of teachings, uh, so particularly in relationship to the, what's called the Shitro, the Hundred Feastful and Wrathful Deities, the Guya Garbha Tantra, and the uh, total uh, Bardo total listen, hearing uh, liberation upon hearing in the Bardo, which is also known as the Tibetan Book of the Dead uh, in English, which is a misnomer. It shouldn't really be called that, but we're stuck with it. <clears throat> Um, and yet I don't claim to be a master of this material yet. So, uh, here is the basic, this is the basic schema, 
what we're doing what we're doing with all of this all of these schemas because i'm going to present you with a bunch of schemas today there are a bunch of overlays a bunch of patterns what we're doing is trying to make comprehensible the incomprehensible we're using we're using something that's comprehensible to begin to approach the incomprehensible so none of these this is all provisional all of this is provisional this is all relative we're trying to understand the ultimate of this relative so what you'll see with the five dhyani buddhas and there are i should tell you there are variations on this but this is the most common pattern in the center is virochana uh, and the center is the skanda of consciousness uh, i'm starting at the center i usually within my own practice tend to start in the east but i'm going to start in the center today because i think it's easier to see uh Bairochana is, is in the center uh it's the he's the he's the pure the purity he represents the purity of the skanda of consciousness uh he's the color white uh it's uh, and he represents the wisdom of the dharma datu which is the purification of the delusion poison or the poison of delusion so uh Virochana is the Buddha is in the Buddha family because these, these are also the five Buddha families. They're the five skandhas. They're the five poisons. They're the five wisdoms. They're all of them. These represent all of them simultaneously and more, much more, which I have not included. So at the center we have uh, Virochana, and then in this mandala here in front of us, in the bottom is uh akshobhya which is really in if you're in the center of this mandala the front uh, your front is the east or the mandala facing you the east is what's facing you so this uh akshobhya in the east is in front and uh, akshobhya uh is the uh represents the pure the pure the purity of the skanda form uh, he represents the Vajra family. He's a dark blue, mirror-like wisdom. Uh, so that's, you know, the reality exactly as it is, without distortion. And uh, it's the transformation and the purification of the aversion poison. And then in the south, which in this one is the uh, one to the left, which usually, if, you, if, you, if, this is, if you're facing this mandala, you would have Akshobhya in the east, right up in you, right up to you, and then to your left, it would look like this. To your left would be Radhanasambhava. But if you're if you're visualizing yourself at the center of this mandala, Radhanasambhava would be to your right. So that's maybe a little confusing, but there it is. And Radhanasambhava is the Ratna family, the jewel family, uh, the south, uh, the skanda of feeling, the purification of the skanda of feeling. Is golden in color or yellow, depending on how you uh, understand that. The wisdom of equanimity, which is the purification of the poison of pride, the pure form of pride is equanimity. And then in the West, we have Amitabha Buddha, the lotus family, the skandha's perception, his red color. The wisdom is discriminative wisdom, which is the pure, pure form of the poison of desire. And then in the north, we have Amoga City. Uh, formations I put here partially because it wouldn't fit. Karmic formations uh, is one of the ways that this kind is translated. Uh, he's green, representing all accomplishing wisdom, which is the purification of the poison of envy. So this is your basic, you could say, you could almost say this is the basic uh, five skanda, five Buddha family layout. You know, this is the one that's the fundamental layout that's employed throughout pretty much all of uh, Mahayana Buddhism. So it's good to know this. And then there are a couple of more things to know about this beyond just this basic schema which is that there often is considered a sixth family. 
So we've got those five families, and then we have a sixth family, and this does tie into the Tantra. Please bear with me. <laughs> the uh, sixth family is sort of the uh, culmination of all of the five families, uh, unification of all of the five families. Uh, in the uh, in the Far East, uh, in, in China and in Southeast Asia, that would be rather than a sixth family, they use Virochana, the central Buddha that way. They, they look at him as being the Adi Buddha or the first Buddha or the culminating Buddha. Uh, in uh, Kala Chakra Tantra, of course, that would be Kala Chakra. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, and in most of the Sarm, you, most of the tantras of the Sarma schools, that uh, that would be uh, by Sarma schools, I mean the newer schools, the Kaju, the Shakya, and the Gelugpa schools, and the Jonang uh, school. Any school that's not Yingma essentially uh, is a Sarma school, uh, and they view Vajradhara. As the sixth Buddha, as the Adi Buddha, as the as the primordial Buddha. Now we come into this this uh, conceptual, uh, you know, sh sh kind of blurry edges. We have we have blurry edges on all of these all the time because they're just ways trying to represent the things that can't be represented anyway. So you know this. Uh, this representation now, like in the Yin Mosque, so so we've got we've got the sixth family, which is Vajradhara, and then in the Yin Mosque school, they take it even a step farther, and they've got the uh, Adi, the the sixth family is Vajradhara, but then there's the Buddha that was Buddha before there were Buddhas, which is uh, Samantabhadra, the Buddha Samantabhadra, as but not the not the Bodhisattva Samantabhadra. Anyway, so it's good to know. That there are that there is this idea, this concept of the of the five Buddha families and the sixth family and the Adi Buddha or the primordial Buddha, and that will become when keep this in mind because when we get to the next page, it'll become important. Now, another aspect that's important are the are the three kayas, the three Buddha bodies, uh, which is, starts out as the two kayas. There are the two kayas and the three kayas and the four kayas and the five kayas. I'm only gonna talk about the two and the three kayas. I think there's even one schema that has six kayas, but I'm only gonna talk about the two kayas, three kayas right now, two and three kayas. Uh, the two kayas are the Dharmakaya and the Rupakaya. Rupa is uh, also in Pali and Sanskrit, it just means form basically. So it's the form kaya, the, the form body, one that's perceptible, one that you can see, as opposed to one a body that's not uh, visual, visible or audible or tactile or gustatory or whatever. Um, and then to get the three kayas, we divide that rupa kaya into two further kayas, which is the sambhoga kaya and the nirmana kaya. Uh, and the sambhoga kaya is the, Lama talks about it a lot as the imaginal realm it's not so much that it's just something that we make up but it's something that we can only touch when we open up that part of our consciousness to it it's there and then the nirmanakaya is the physical manifestation that's what toku the word toku is the tibetan for nirmanakaya so you know, the Dalai Lama is a Nirmanakaya. He is a Tolku of the 13th Dalai Lama. My teacher tagged a Tolku as the Tolku, the Nirmanakaya, the emanation of uh, the previous Chagdad Tolku. So it's like that. There are a lot of Tolkus in Tibet. Those are the Nirmanakayas. So now we get, now that we got the easy stuff out of the way, We have our text, uh, which is chanting the names of Manju Shri. And but I'm, I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip down on my notes a little bit here because I, I didn't really have time to put them together as thoroughly as I had intended to do. At the beginning of the chanting of the names of Manju Shri, we 
we have Vajradhara, which is the one of the, the Buddha on the right in this uh, representation here, and Vajrapani, who is the uh, wrathful Buddha on the left. Now, in our text, Vajrapani appears as Vajradhara. And remember, Vajradhara is the Adi Buddha according to the Sarma schools, and he is the sixth family B Buddha, and he is also, uh, according to all of the schools, he's the sixth family Buddha. And some of the schools have that seventh one, basically Nyingma is the seventh one, but this, there is one schema of this Tantra, which gives us seven uh, mandalas. So, this, text begins with, uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be flashing up and down like that one. This text starts with Vajrapani uh, assuming the form of Vajradhara and requesting from Shakyamuni Buddha that he teach the uh, chanting of the names of Manjushri. Now, before I go any farther, are there any questions or comments about what, what I've done so far? Because we're about to shift into a completely different year here. Hey, Jared. Hey, Jared. I must have missed something about Vajrapani. Could you repeat I something didn't, about I didn't really say anything about Vajrapani, except that he is assuming, in this case, the form of Vajradhara. But Vajrapani is the lord of mantra. He is the he's the in our realm, he's the one who taught the Vajrayana. He's the master and lord of all of the wrathful ways of being. So Vajrapani is uh the is power. Remember in the in the in the Praise to Tsongkhapa, we say he's Vajrapani, the destroyer of all the Maras. And so that's Vajrapani is the powerful Lord. And actually in the uh, beginning of the Tantra, we'll see. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through a line by line commentary of the Tantra. We'll see, uh, we'll see how Vajrapani is actually referred to by Shakyamuni Buddha in this Tantra. Is that good enough for now? Yeah, thanks. Dirk, I was wondering if uh, the Dharmakaya and Rumakaya are like overlapping concepts with ultimate truth and conventional truth. I would be aware of such a equation. <laughs> I'm not saying that there isn't anything, but I, I wouldn't make that. I wouldn't make make it equivalent that way at all. It's a little. It's too simplistic. Yeah, I think so. I think you can run into create troubles for yourself. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, it's true. What Dell said is true. That the five families include the five female Buddhas, I didn't get into them because I'm trying to keep it to what's actually transmitted in this Tantra. And the Abhyam level is, isn't being transmitted, but it is good to keep that in mind, that each of them is actually in union uh, with the female Buddha. This is also, though, all of this is beyond gender. Uh, the genders here are not sexual. They are not human genders, anyway just for clarification on that one. Um, so I didn't leave the mothers out because in this case, see, uh, Manjushri is, is here being equated. Manjushri is equated with Prajnaparamita. So Manjushri is the mother of the Buddhas here. Manjushri is the mother of the Buddhas. So we, once again, you know, they talk about in, in the Tantra, they, they talk about his womb. <laughs> We're kind of, 
outside of the idea of male and female being something that has kind of meaning. Uh, so, what I want to do here is not switch to that screen, but switch to this screen and go back to the beginning of it. And I want to read the, with you the uh, first 16 verses of Chanting the Names of Manjushri. Uh, once again, I'm not going to go verse by verse or anything like that, but I want, I want you to have a real feel for, for it. And that's basically where we've gotten. We've gotten to the first 16 verses here. So, Mind you, whenever it says Vajradhara, it's also saying Vajrapani. So it's, it's an interesting thing. Now the glorious Vajradhara, superb in training those difficult to tame, being victorious over the triple world, a hero, an esoteric ruler, a lord with his weapon, his eyes as opened white lotuses and face like a pale red lotus in bloom, his hand waving now and again the best of Vajras, with endless Vajrapani showing billows of angry brows, heroes and taming those difficult to tame, their forms heroic and fearsome, their hands waving and flashing tip of Vajras, excellent agents for the sake of the world by their great compassion and insight of means. By disposition happy and joyful, delighted, but with forms of wrath and hostility, protectors and doing the duty of Buddhas, altogether they stood bent down in homage, bowing to the protector, the completely awakened, the blessed one, the Tathagata, Vajradhara stood in front, his hands folded in homage and spoke these words, for my sake, my benefit, O overlord. Through, you know, he's addressing Shakyamuni Buddha here. For my sake, my benefit, O overlord, through compassion toward me, may I be an obtainer of the realization process of illusions met. For the sake of all beings sunk in unknowing, their minds confused in defilement, that they may obtain the highest fruit. May they complete the awakened, the blessed one, the teacher, the guide of the world, knowing the reality of the great vow. Highest in knowing the faculties of dispositions, may he reveal the litany of names of Manjushri, the Gnostic entity who is self-produced, embodied Gnosis, the Blessed One's Gnostic body, local Lord, the great coronal dome, that's the Ushnisha, the mound the crown, at the top of the crown at the head of Buddha Shakyamuni. This excellent litany of names with depths of meaning and lofty meaning, with great meaning, unequal and blessed, wholesome and beginning, middle and end. That which was spoken by previous Buddhas will be spoken by future ones and that which the completely awakened and the present recite again and again. That litany of the names extolled in the Maya Jaya, in the Maya Jala Maha Tantra by unlimited delighted Mahavajradharas, bearers of mantras. Until deliverance, I will preserve it with steadfast intentions, since I am a protector, the esoteric bearer of all the completely awakened. For the destruction of their every defilement and elimination, for all their unknowing, I will reveal this litany to beings, each according to his own disposition. Having beseeched the Tathagata, thus for instruction, Vajrapani, the esoteric leader, his body bent, his hands folded in homage, stood in the fore of the assembly. So what we've had here is uh, Vajrapani, in the form of Vajradhara, asking Buddha Shakyamuni to teach him this uh, tantra as the primary vehicle for him to teach those in the to teach beings and bring them and lead them to enlightenment. And so the rest of this Tantra is uh, Buddhi Shakyamuni teaching to Vajrapani the uh, forms of Manjushri. And I'm not going to uh, 
go into this next chart here in any kind of detail. Uh, you can look at this later. I took this from uh, Alex Wayman's 1983 uh, book, which uh, I'll show you that this is the cover of the book here. Uh, I took it from I took the schema from him, and I, then I collated it with the chapter titles from uh, the translation by Ronald Davidson. And then the translation by Alexander Berzin, version Berzin, <laughs> who who uh, based his translation, by the way, on Ronald Davidson's translations, and then those in, and then also from the Guillermo Dorje translation, which occurs in this book, the uh, Essential Tantras of Maha Yoga. Uh, the Complete Yingma Tradition from Sutra to Tantra, books 15 through 17. So, and I've been reading this Tantra over and over and over and over and over. It takes about 35 minutes each time if you read it slowly. And if you read it faster, it doesn't really make it that much shorter, but it makes it so much shorter. Uh, You'll see in the Tantra itself, you got, you know, Shakyamuni, Shakyamuni Buddha replies to Vajradhara, who is actually Vajrapani. Although, see, identity, this idea of a personal identity is just being just blown apart here all the time. Uh, he replied to Vajrapani, there is the answer to the question, the esoteric leader of great power. Well done, O oh glorious Vajradhara, it is proper of you, Vajrapani, that prompted by great compassion for the world's benefit, you were eager to hear, eager to hear from me the litany of names of the Gnostic body of Manjushri, having great meaning, purifying and clarifying transgression. And I'm not going to go into this. The reason I brought that is because that would be the second chapter, the six verses in reply. The third chapter is two verses on reflecting on the six families. So see, once again, the six families is what's going on on this Tantra. And it could be seen as seven, so I added that seventh just to be complete. Uh, and then the fourth chapter is three verses on the steps and the realization process of illusions net. And I'm not going to even try to talk about that chapter. Instead, I'm going to come back to this and show you that that's what is meant here. You see there, it says chapter four. Um, part of what's going on here is not only is there, as Vel pointed out, the female Buddhas in the schema of the five Dhyani Buddhas. There's also an entire mapping of wrathful Buddhas and both male and female onto those five Buddhas. And I'm not going to go into that at all here. I'm only mentioning it uh, with an eye toward, my only eye actually, toward, uh, <laughs> toward showing how these seven different mandalas, because those five Dhyani Buddhas, they're a mandala. They are, they're like the, they're like a primordial mandala of Buddhism, of Mahayana Buddhism. And so if you take, you can take, the thing is that what, what, what we have a tendency to do, okay, this is really, this is really the, this is really what I'm trying to get at here anyway. My, my whole talk, the only, my whole idea for this talk really is that, you know, we tend to think of, oh, we do Medicine Buddha if we're sick and we do uh, Avalokiteshvara if we need compassion and we do et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We do Vajrapan, we do uh, Manjushri if we need to be smart. Okay. The fact is that there are the, these are all manifestations of the Dharmakaya. They are not 
that that specialization is in our minds it's not in the buddha these different forms appear to us because yes okay if that if that works for you yes chant definitely do medicine buddha for disease do do these things do purification with vajrasattva that's fine you know it's good i'm not saying it's bad but it's also good to look into the higher the higher the view when you get into the higher view there is no there is no separation there of one nature there's only one buddha nature there's only one dharmakaya there aren't a whole bunch of them so uh so when we get into this a little bit farther if you take you've got you've got those five dhyani buddhas and any one of those dhyani buddhas is also the center of its own uh, that that buddha is the center of that buddha's own mandala and and every 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 buddha and bodhisattva within that mandala is the center of, of that buddha bodhisattva's own mandala so the mandalas are infinite. It's like the Dalai Lama's book, uh, you know, where he's, where he's well, or or in the the prayer of Samantabhadra, where we've got a, a Buddha, uh, we've got we've got a, we've got we've got as many Buddhas as the sands of the Ganges on every atom. So it's very much along that line. But this but this actually brings it close, very closer to us by going into this re, by examining it in such detail with so many schemas. It, it like it brings us. You see, you got the easy ones, which are that simple. You got one simple schema, and that's good. If that's if that's the level you're practicing at, that's the level you should practice at. But it's also good to be aware that they're all that all of these other schemas exist. And now we have this tantra, which brings us into all of these different. Manjushri is all of these Buddhas. You see, Manjushri is each of those five Dhyani Buddhas. Manjushri is each of the five wrathful Buddhas, both the consort of the both the, the Buddhas and the Buddha consort Yabyum. He is all of them, all of the time. It's just that we perceive him uh, and, and he's abstracted. Uh, you know, you, we take we practice the orange Manjushri. Well, that's 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 a form of Manjushri, but Manjushri is always all of this, all of the time. He's all of these Buddhas. He's the Adi Buddha, the primordial Buddha. Well, they should have made that Adi rather than Ati, sorry. Adi Buddha, the primordial Buddha. And here we have a whole bunch of different kinds of th these. These are a bunch of Buddhas from a whole lot of different tantric sources uh, that desimplify <laughs> our schema of the five Buddhas. So we have wrathful Buddhas. Uh, but you see, we still have basically the families. The Adi Buddha, of course, is not part of a family because he is beyond families. He is all of the family. So he doesn't belong to any particular family. He's like an internationalist. He's not a nationalist. <laughs> he doesn't belong to one country. He belongs to them all. Uh, so that's, and that's where it starts, of course, as usual, it starts with that one. So in some, uh, in some assessments, of this, depending on the trans, depending on the commentary that's used, because that's uh, something else that I left out at the beginning here uh, of the of the tantras with commentarial traditions in India that were brought over to Tibet. The most extensive commentaries are for this tantra and the Guya Garba tantra, which is the Part of the same cycle as this tantra in, in, in essence that's the hundred peaceful and wrathful deities to, to simplify, oversimplify that tantra. But, uh, so this the important the importance of this tantra can't really be overstated the and and if you start reading it every day i can only tell you from uh, I was I was starting to read it every day before Lama asked me to do this, and after he asked me to do this, I started doing it like three times a day. And I have to say that when you really start to encounter this tantra, it will open up your mind. Uh, 
in ways that you might not have thought it could open. It's a very powerful Tantra, it's not easy. You don't have to understand everything, just like Don Lama says in the Buddha Dharma study program, if you, if you don't understand it, just keep, keep, just keep reading anyway, because eventually it starts making sense. And this Tantra, uh, you can refer, I will post these notes. I'm not going to go through all of these different ones, but you can see we're mapping onto Vairochana, Amogasiddhi, Akshobhya, Amitabha, Ratnasambhava, and Vajrasattva. Now, Vajrasattva, see, Vajrasattva again. Vajrasattva is this strange kind of, where he fits into the schema is another strange one. Sometimes Vajrasattva is seen as the sixth family. Uh, particularly by the Nyingma, but sometimes I think even by the other schools. I'm not sure about that. Certainly in the Nyingma. So, and then and then the Karma family. Sometimes the Karma family, which is the all-accomplishing wisdom. Uh, sometimes the Karma family is not is 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 kind of left out because it's considered it's 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 it, this is we're we're in development and completion stage and the karma family is sort of leads into the completion because it's the all accomplishing wisdom so there are a whole lot of things that blow apart any kind of overlay you want to put on this mantra it's 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 useful to me it's useful to have these schemas because they help open it up they help make it seem like less of just just this big gigantic thing that you don't understand and you start feeling like you understand it a little but as it goes all of the time you constantly realize that there's more to know there's more under to understand than that you don't really understand anything and i think with that i well i'm going to uh, go quickly through uh, my resources here there is uh you know we've got alexander Bergen's uh translation based on ronald davidson's translation i don't know what day Bergen's is but Donaldson Davidson did his in 1995. I can't find the original article it was in. If anybody finds that, I'd appreciate knowing about it. Uh, it's you know it's in a it was in a paper that was inside of a journal somewhere that I can't find or I haven't been able to find yet. Now, Gurmay Dorje's the litany of uh, names of Manjushri is book seven book seventeen part two of this two volume set so it's part two of book two actually i'm not suggesting that you get that uh, but i do really like the translation and that and it includes the most extensive commentary on this tantra in english this is from chandra goman uh, the commentaries are there are commentaries from the point of view of maha yoga there are many com many i forget like 90 Let's not forget how, what the numbers are. There are a whole bunch of commentaries from the point of view of Kala Chakra. And then there are a whole bunch of commentaries from the point of view of Yoga Tantra. And rather than high, mind you, Maha Yoga is part of highest Yoga Tantra. Uh, from the point of view of Yoga Tantra, which is the highest of the three lower Tantras before the highest Yoga Tantra. So you got Kala Chakra, which is highest Yoga Tantra, Maha Yoga Tantra, Yoga Tantra, and then I think there are also commentaries from Amitara Yoga Tantra. So there's, there's, this is, this is something which inspired the Indian commentators and masters uh, endlessly before it was ever even brought to Tibet. Uh, also, uh, there's a something on Shambhala called "Chanting the Names of Manjushri: A Reader's Guide." You can probably take it with a grain of salt, but I think it's a really good beginning place to start from if you want to investigate this Tantra. And then also, uh, Zongzhar Chense Rinpoche on uh, July 25th, which was the anniversary of uh, Jamyun Chense Wangpo's uh, birthday, 200th birthday of Jamyun Chense Wangpo, of whom Zongzhar Chense Rinpoche is actually considered to be a nomination. Uh, they did, he did a brief teaching at the beginning, and then there was a global chanting of the names of Manju Shri that was done. And so that's available on YouTube, a recording of it. And Lama Zopa Rinpoche uh, has uh, placed on the Lama, uh, on the Lama Yeshe archives, uh, 
a he, he does an audio lung of the tantra in other words he reads it aloud in tibetan pretty quickly uh and he does a, a brief uh, teaching on the tantra so those are some of the resources that i've i collected over the last few days if you have more i'd appreciate knowing about them oops sorry and with that i think i'm going to say that that's enough talking from me and if anybody would like to say anything or ask any questions or complaints or whatever the comma says i throw it open so you're all going to talk at once eh? thank you derek that was really interesting well, I hope I didn't bore people too much. Thank you, Dirk. Dirk, great. No, thank you, Dirk. That was great. It was really interesting. Um, Dirk, I was curious. Um, just you know, is there a reason why people might feel individually drawn towards um, one of the Buddhas? I, you know, knowing that they're all from the same, um, you know, they're all the same Buddha nature, you know, is there a reason why particularly I feel really drawn towards Vajrasattva? So do I. Uh, yes, uh, I think I think that's part, I think that's uh, part of how, how, how it works is that uh, you go with you go with what uh, resonates for you, and the Yidam daily because because a, a lot of the this the system is uh, you, you have to start where you are, and to accomplish any of those Buddhas is to accomplish all. Of, that's this is the thing. If you accomplish Vajrasattva, you will also accomplish Manjushri. If you accomplish Tara, you will also accomplish Vajrasattva. If you accomplish Avalokiteshvara, you will also accomplish Tara. It's, uh, it's, if you fully, if you fully accomplish, if you come to the end of, of that of that practice, if you if you become enlightened, you accomplish all of the. You've accomplished all of the Buddhas. You've arrived at that non-separation. So I think, yes, you can't, you can't get there by trying to practice them all unless you're practicing something that practices them all. <laughs> if, that's the, if that's the practice, then that's the practice. But, but it, it's not, there's a saying that, the, that uh, let me see if I can get the saying right, that, that uh, it's good to practice, it's good to accomplish one Buddha completely. Uh, but Tibetans, because they practice all of the Buddhas all of the time, never accomplish anything. It's something like that. It's a Tibetan saying. I, I'm paraphrasing it badly, but it's something like that. So, yes, essentially, yes. There is a good reason for being attracted to one of the deities and practicing that deity. Cool. Thank you. And then um, I also have another question. I, I might have missed it because I, I came in late, but... Um, is this a practice where we would want to ask um, for permission from Lamala first to to do it, um, or are are we able to start it now? And if so, is it going to be posted somewhere? Uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, Jacqueline. <laughs> I, I flagged. Would you, would you repeat that? I was I was distracted by some. I was distracted by a chat post. Oh, sure. No problem. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, um, so is this a, a, a tantra that we would want to ask for permission from uh, Lama to begin practicing? Or can we can we begin it? And if so, is it posted somewhere, um, the text? Well, I was going to suggest that we all get together and ask Lama for a reading transmission of this text. Uh I can't really answer that question. I think you should ask Lama yourself whether or not you particularly should practice it. Um, on the other hand, when he taught about Manjushri a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, I'm not, I never remember when things are in the past. When he, when he taught about Manjushri, he did mention 
that one of the things you do is chant the names of Manjushri. So um, I'm not though qualified to say. So I, I, I would say the consult Lama about whether or not you should practice this by yourself. Okay. Thank you, Dirk. But I think we should get him to definitely do a reading transmission for us and a permission, basically give us permission as a group. Or as, um, also, though, I was going to make a suggestion that it takes about a half, it takes about 35 to 40 minutes to read the Tantra once. And I would like to do a, read it together as a group three times at some time. If anybody would like to do that with me. If not, it's okay. Okay, so let's set a time. I'll make sure it's okay with Lama. I'm pretty sure he'll be okay with it. Uh, but I'll make sure it's okay with Lama, and we'll post it on the calendar and get back to you. I have to choose a time that doesn't conflict with anything. Sounds great. We are now doing Manjushri practice on Mondays. I'm sorry? We are doing Manjushri practice on Mondays, that it's not Buddha Dharma study program. So we already have a time that we could just. Well, that's true. We could just do it on that, practice. in that slot. It'll take, it's going to take closer to two hours though. It won't be over in an hour. Just warning. Because oh, you also, you don't just do, practice. you don't just do the reading. I'm sorry. <laughs> So sad, a two-hour practice. <laughs> well, it doesn't bother me, but I just like people to know what they're getting into. <laughs> now, before we go, I would like to, uh, of course, you can just leave if you don't want to, but uh, I would like to uh, do the short, this brief Manjushri practice once again. Now you have a little bit more, maybe a little bit more information about Manjushri to work with uh, in approaching this practice. And also, uh, I should have uh, mentioned that it would be a good idea to first uh, generate the mind of enlightenment and to actually be seeking enlightenment through this practice itself right now through this practice, when we finish this practice, the intention is that once we accomplish this practice today, we will be enlightened and we will become enlightened because we're going to, we're going to lead all beings to enlightenment. And so through this practice, this is what's going to happen today, right now. Also uh, visualize, uh, it was pointed out to me last, a couple of weeks ago that I didn't, bring this up and I should have, uh, and I should have earlier. Visualize, this is Manjushri, of course, and visualize Manjushri in front of you. Uh, and I would, you could also go so far as to visualize a D at its heart, but you don't have to. Uh, and we're going to do the mantra a hundred times, uh, mostly silently. And at the end, that D, 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 D is how the Manjushri practice is done. What you want to do is uh, as many Ds as you can with a single breath. But it, I do have a pretty long breath. So if you want to keep doing the D with me uh, after you run out of breath, if you do, then please just go ahead and do that. There's nothing wrong with it. And we'll get started. Homage to the Guru and the Protector Venerable Manju Gosha. Your wisdom is brilliant and pure like the sun, free from the clouds of the two obscurations. You perceive the whole of reality exactly as it is, and so hold the book of transcendental wisdom at your heart. You look upon all beings imprisoned within samsara, shrouded by the thick darkness of ignorance, and tormented by suffering, with the love of a mother for her only child. Your enlightened speech, endowed with sixty melodious tones, like the thundering roar of a dragon, awakens us from the sleep of destructive emotions and frees us from the chains of karma. Dispelling the darkness of ignorance, you wield the sword of wisdom to cut through all our suffering. Pure from the very beginning, you have reached the end of the ten bhumis and perfected all enlightened qualities. Foremost, the Buddha's heirs. Your body is adorned with 112 marks of enlightenment. To Manju Gosha, the gentle voice, I prostrate and pray, dispel the darkness from my mind.
Om Rabbazana Di 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 Om Oh, my rabbit son, I deal, my rabbit son, I deal. With all of your kindness and love, let your wisdom shining light clear the darkness of my ignorance once and for all. Grant me, I pray, the intelligence, the brilliance to understand the scriptures, the words of the Buddha and works of masters. And whenever I wish to look upon you or ask of you anything at all, Lord and protector Manjushri, let me see you without any hindrance. Okay, well, I'm going to turn this over to Matthew, unless there are more comments. Connor can do the D, 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 D much better than I can, but I, I have a paralyzed tongue. <laughs> All right, here we go with uh, prayers, the prayer that saved... Sakya, may all the diseases that disturb the minds of sentient beings and which result from karma and temporary conditions, such as the harms of spirits, illness, and the elements, never occur throughout the realms of this world. May whatever suffering arise due to life-threatening diseases, which like a butcher leading an animal to the slaughter, separate the body from the mind in a mere instant never occur throughout the realms of this world. May all embodied beings remain unharmed by acute, chronic, and infectious diseases, the mere names of which can inspire the same terror as would be felt in the jaws of Yama, Lord of Death. May the 80,000 classes of harmful obstructors, the 360 evil spirits that harm without warning, the 404 types of disease and so forth, never cause harm to any embodied being. May whatever sufferings arise due to disturbances in the four elements depriving the body and mind of every pleasure be totally pacified and may the body and mind have radiance and power and be endowed with long life, good health and well-being. By the compassion of the gurus and the three jewels, the power of the dakinis, dharma protectors and guardians, and the strength of the infallibility of karma and its results. May these many dedications and prayers be fulfilled as soon as they are made.
Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful Chenresik, Tenzin Gyatso. Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losang Drakpa, I make request at your holy feet. Thanks, everyone. I should also say Lama asked me to uh, uh, set up a, a student, a page for student teachings uh, where he wants to put notes like Patty's and uh, Jules and anything else. Anybody who's done a talk, if you've done a talk, please send me your notes to the talk. And uh, along in that, along those lines, I'll also be posting my notes for this talk. So. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Dirk. Um, I don't think I have any other announcements. Um, does anyone have any announcements? No? All right, cool. Um, hopefully we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow for Manjushri practice. <laughs>